formation of the pre-initiation complex. in eukaryotes. In eukaryotes, RNA polymerase doesn't bind directly to the promoter sequence unassisted. Rather, in a eukaryote, RNA polymerase binds to a pre-initiation complex, which is a large complex of proteins that assemble at the promoter. What we're going to do here is look at the sequence of events in the formation of the pre-initiation complex. First of all, if we look at a basal promoter, the one element that is almost universal in eukaryotic promoters is the Tata box. It has the consensus sequence TATAA, and this is the site where a protein binds called Tata binding protein. So Tata binding protein binds, show it like so, abbreviated TVP. Tata binding protein binds to the Tata box. When it does so, it bends the DNA through a fairly sharp angle, so it would look like this. TBP bound to the Tata box. Next thing that binds, sometimes referred to as TF2D. TF2D is actually a complex made up of a large number of proteins. Each of these proteins is referred to as a TAF, which is an unfortunate item being an acronym. One of the things it abbreviates is also an acronym. TAFs are TBP associated factors. So, TF2D is composed of TAFs. These proteins bind to TBP, and this is the beginning of the basal pre-initiation complex. We refer to these factors, TBP and TF2D and various other uh, transcription factors in this immediate area as the general transcription factors or the basal transcription factors. There are several other ones, TF2B, TF2D, TF2E, and so on. The one that I'm going to be primarily concerned with, and we'll talk about its role in a bit, is TF2H. Now, all of these proteins assemble here, forming this pre-initiation. This is, you can think of this as the, the basal pre-initiation complex. This complex, like most multi-protein complexes, is held together by hydrogen bonding. The TBP has, is hydrogen bound to the Tata box, and the various components in here are hydrogen bonded to each other. All of these are relatively weak bonds. This means that this complex is in a dynamic equilibrium. It can assemble, it can come apart, if uh, RNA polymerase 2, which is going to do the transcription, comes along when the pre-initiation complex is in place, you're going to get transcription. If RNA polymerase 2 comes along and these components have come loose, then you're not going to get transcription. So the rate at which transcription will occur, that is to say the frequency of transcription of whatever gene is down here, the rate of transcription is going to be controlled largely by the stability of this complex. The more stable the complex, the more likely it is to be there when RNA polymerase II shows up, and the more likely you are to get a transcript, thus increasing the number of transcripts produced per unit time. Now, what can, what can we do to increase the stability of this complex? Mainly, it has to be bound to the DNA at other places. And the way that this, is, this works is by the action of activators. So let me move it down here. There's your Tata box. Here's TBP. TAFs. TF2H. Now, what else can bind nearby? Immediately nearby, you have what we call promoter proximal elements. These are DNA sequences that would include things like the GC box, the CAT box, consensus sequence CAAT, uh, a variety of other components. What they have in common is, as the name suggests, 
they act only when they are close to the promoter, close to the ta-ta box. All of these would be within a range of a couple hundred bases upstream of the ta-ta box. For each one of these, there is a transacting activator protein that binds to that promoter element. So SP1 is the protein that binds to GC box. Uh, cat transcription factor, or CTF, is the protein that binds to the cat box. Each of these proteins has a DNA binding domain in contact with the DNA element and an activation domain, mark that AD, the activation domain, which most often is going to be making contact with the TAF. What this does is, first of all, you may have some protein-protein interactions that change conformation of the TAFs or other proteins in the pre-initiation complex, making transcription more likely. But also there's just a stabilization effect in that by binding here, now you have anchored the pre-initiation complex not only to the DNA here, but also to the DNA nearby in the promoter proximal elements. This stabilizes the complex, increases the frequency of transcription. In addition to these promoter proximal elements, there can also be DNA sequences that are much further away. And we refer to these as enhancer elements. Enhancer elements can be thousands of base pairs away. They can be upstream, they can be downstream, they can be located almost anywhere. As a loose approximation, we can say that binding of an, of an activator to an enhancer element is going to stimulate transcription at the nearest ta-ta box. This is not quite exactly true. There's some, there's some influence of chromatin structure, the availability of the ta-ta box, and so on. But as a first approximation, let's say that binding of the activator to the enhancer element stimulates transcription at the nearest ta-ta box. How does this do this even when that enhancer element may be thousands of bases away? The DNA folds over. So you may have a big loop of DNA, and then here's an enhancer. Activator protein binds to the enhancer. Again, it has a DNA binding domain and an activation domain. The activation domain makes contact. They may make contact directly with TAFs, or they may make contact with other proteins there are proteins in the pre-initiation complex whose function is to mediate between activator proteins and proteins in the pre-initiation complex. Such proteins are referred to as co-activators. And the point of a co-activator, the thing that distinguishes it from the rest of these proteins, is that a co-activator is not making contact with the DNA at any point. It's only binding to pro different proteins within the complex. Again, binding of the activator to the enhancer site allows the uh, activator then to bind to the DNA and also to proteins in the pre-initiation complex or else to a co-activator that's then bound to the pre-initiation complex, all of which stabilizes formation of the pre-initiation complex so that when RNA polymerase II comes along, It's able to bind and transcribe the gene. 